Welcome back to Balanced Health. We're having a great discussion here on sleep disorders with our guest, Dr. Mouton. And we've learned some really important things. And uh, I'd I just like you to, to put people's minds at ease. If, first of all, if they're having a problem, don't be afraid to discuss with your doctor. Absolutely. Or they could just call, call y'all, right? And um, certainly anyone who's having trouble with their sleep should make an appointment and talk to their primary care physician. Um, if necessary, get a referral to a, a sleep mm -hmm. disorder specialist or uh, people can contact the sleep disorder center directly and, and see a sleep specialist there. And what is yours called? What is? Uh, we're the Center for Sleep Medicine. Sleep Center for Sleep there Medicine. There are centers throughout the country. Um, walk us through that a little bit because yes. I think there's people out there and I'm not out there, I'm here and I'm thinking it, so it's probably <laughs> out there they are. And that's it, okay, that's weird. I mean, do I wear pajamas? I, and I, I, if I come in my SpongeBob pajamas, are you gonna tell anybody? Um, you know, Only if I lay down, you know. Completely what, what? confidential. <laughs> Everything that happens is confidential. And, 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 and Joe and I were just saying, we would never be able to fall asleep knowing I mean, people were watching like, us, you know. You know and, and, I, and I, you know, I, I, we, I come from a, a, a background, you know, of anxiety and high-strung mm -hmm. people. So, you know, I admit that openly, but, um, you know, at home, some nights I go to sleep nice, some nights I don't, but I mean, mm -hmm. I would just think that, you know, I'd be looking at them, and they're looking at me, are you looking at me, you're looking at me, yeah, what I'm happened? trying to sleep. Let me her. start out by saying that not everyone with a sleep disorder needs a sleep study. Okay. So very often patients with primary insomnia, or for example, restless legs, there's no need to study them in the laboratory. Okay. People are afraid of this, but I, I can tell you that we don't see uh, instances where patients come in and they're not able to sleep. It simply doesn't happen uh, maybe one or two times that I can think of in 10 or 20 years. Uh, Will you knock them on the head with something? Absolutely not. <laughs> My uh, sleeping pill. <laughs> actually, most of our patients are, are usually so sleepy, it's more of a uh, task to keep them wow. awake until it's time to start the study. They're sleep so. deprived depri people. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, so they just sleep in this nice environment and absolutely. they're studied and during the night. And most sleep centers are more like hotel rooms. They're not okay. hospital rooms. Uh, in our center we have uh, full-size beds mm -hmm. and private bathrooms with each room. So think of it as an overnight in a hotel room. We're almost out of time here, but one quick question about sleeping pills. I mean, you know, are they, are they overused, are they abused, and are they habit-forming? We know probably the answer is yes, mm -hmm. uh, but yet they're wonderful for, a, like, for instance, for me, when I'm traveling overseas and I have mm -hmm. eight hours on the plane and I can never sleep on a plane, I have taken a sleeping pill and it's wonderful. But how often is okay, and do you have a word on that? Sleeping pills are generally uh, indicated for the management of short-term insomnia, something like you mentioned, like traveling or something that's not gonna last for months and years. Mm -hmm. For insomnia that persists more than several months, certainly, uh, they typically are not as effective. Right, right. Some of the side effects can be pretty weird. A friend yes. of mine was taking, yes. I won't mention the name, but he was taking one consistently, and he wound up getting up in the middle of the night and cooking. Oops, and, and that's the doctor a said dangerous. that's actually a common symptom. So I've started giving it to my wife, and I, I, I have cooked meals more often. No, but that's a true story, except that's for the funny. last part. That's that a is. very well known side effect of a very popular side effect. Did you cook? And well, then you have parasomnias. You get up and you do things okay. that you have no memory for in the morning. Oh my and eating is actually one of the more common behaviors. Well, we're just about out of time. I want to thank you for being with us. Thank was, you very much. It it's wonderful. been great, Thanks, great Doc. information. Thanks for being with us, Doctor. Thank you. And for more information on sleep disorders, go to TLN.com, click on shows, and then on Balanced Health. That's all the time we have. We hope you enjoyed this show. And if you'd like to make a donation or order a DVD copy of the show, just give us a call right now. And to submit your health questions, email us at balancedhealth at tln.com or call the number of your, on your screen and we'll answer those questions on the air. For Joe Costello and myself, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time right here on Balanced Health.